Hello, in this video we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. In these series of videos on SData, we've been entering URLs into the address bar on the browser and getting back XML data in, in the display area of the browser. And one of the things we noticed is that URLs are also returned to us in the display area of the browser. And what we'd like to do is copy those into the, U, into the address bar and use them in the browser. So that's all, all good, but um, how, do, how do we do that? And the, the gotcha here is that XML is one web standard and URLs are another web standard. Now both of them just use plain text. So you just type at the keyboard to do what you need to do. Um, but the difference is, is that they encode special characters differently. So here we see a little bit of XML. So here we've got a little bit of XML. Um, we have ID customer and its value is 1580. And then we end the field slash ID customer in angle brackets. So that's the basic format of XML. But what if you have um, namely characters that interfere with the structure of this, namely um, the less than or greater than sign, um, things of that nature, and, and quotes also have special meaning. So inside the XML, the way that they represent these special characters are with these values. So for instance, I guess less than being, say, one of them, if you wanted to put less than in your data, then you've got to represent that by putting ampersand LT um, semicolon. So if you put ampersand LT semicolon inside this string, then that would be translated by XML processing software as just a less than sign. So that won't interfere with the general structure of the XML, that's just how you um, specify it. Same thing for greater than. And then because ampersand is the special character that starts these strings, it's a special character itself. So if you want ampersand, you have to represent them as ampersand AMP semicolon. So that's basically how we encode the special characters that, mess, that could possibly mess, mess up the structure of our XML. So we'll look at an example of those in a minute, but if you want the reference to all of these, if you Google it, I think one of the good format places is this article on Wikipedia, um, the list of XML and HTML character entity references, sorry, list of XML and HTML character entity references, which actually lists every character in the character set, what it does, and if you need to represent it specially in either XML or HTML. In HTML, there's quite a few more special cases, but we don't have to worry about that because we're not dealing with HTML. We're only dealing with XML and there's only a few cases. So that's XML. Now we'll just go on and we'll look at the URIs. So the URIs, um, we already saw some special encoding there because we're actually already using it. And that's namely that that inside the URL it looks something like this, HTTP, host, you know, host name, and all these slashes and things. And basically we wanted to represent the, the data in, in the way that we wanted to represent it. And some of these are special characters and they have to be encoded. Now a lot of times when you type them into the browser, the browser will do the encoding for you. So if you type the special characters into the browser and hit enter, it'll then convert them to these things like percent to %2c for commerce. So within URLs, it's quite a different encoding scheme where instead of ampersand, percent is the special character to indicate a special character sequence. And then you give the um, hexadecimal ASCII representation of the character after that. So we saw when we wanted to go bargain percent, percent being the usual SQL type wildcard character for match anything, then we had to use percent two five and percent two five matched up here to the percent character. So that's how it handled the percent character. Now you see in the URL encoding, there's quite a lot more percent or things that have to be encoded. Now when you're doing programming, both of these will be handled by your client software and that there'll be routines to encode and decode the XML encoding, encode and decode URL encodings and anything that you want. But it's good to be aware of these because as you're debugging or just playing with these by hand, you're going to see these. And like the XML case, you can get a complete description of these under from Wikipedia. Wikipedia basically knows everything. And in the percent dash encoding section, it gives you the full, the full spiel on, on URL encoding. But this is the basic sort of thing that we've got to know. So the question then is, why am I telling you this? And what does it have to do with S data? So what we're going to do is just look at one quick example here. So we'll have our browser again, and we'll just paste in our good old AR customers finder, and hit enter. 
and here we get back a list of customers. Now, out of here, it might be a little bit hard to see, but we're getting all these different links to different data. So we have refresh, first, last, next. So let's get the URL associated with next. Now, remember that this is in XML. So this is an XML return string, which means that this data is encoded in XML. So you see in here the ampersand, the ampersand, a AMP semicolon. So this is the XML encoding to say this really needs ampersand. Now once I paste this into the address bar, the address bar doesn't know about XML encoding because it uses URL encoding. So what I have to do is I have to get rid of this and make it just become an ampersand again. So now I'm saying start index equals 11 and count equals 10. So then that should be valid for URL encoding. I hit enter and I should get the, the thing starting at um, record 11 and going on from there. So if I look down and I know Sage 300 sample data, I know that T1600 is actually the 11th um, record in sample data. Um, and that means that we actually got the records we wanted. So I just wanted to show this because we're going to be copying things from, from these XML result sets and then using them back in the address bar and, and vice versa to do what we need to do. So I just wanted to be care, careful of this because this certainly has tripped me up in the past where I've got the encoding wrong and had things not work. So hopefully it'll present you, uh, this will prevent a little bit of trouble for you in the future. Uh, thank you.